Okay, so this is a short um, introduction to the section of the course on study design. And what we've done so far is we've looked at different kinds of outcomes and different kinds of measures, so mean, median, mode, and relative risk, and so on. And we've also looked at hypothesis testing, using statistics to determine whether there's differences. Um, between groups in a study, but those are sort of components of study design. Study this section now that we're going to talk about, um, particularly the next few videos, really put it all together. So the whole purpose of learning everything you've learned so far is to understand how studies are actually conducted. Um, in other words, how uh, knowledge, scientific knowledge, is created. So just to establish some terminology before we start, um, what we're going to be talking about is the relationship between an exposure and a disease. And so you've seen this before when we're looking at outcomes like relative risk, but um, overall the study designs, all of the study designs that we talk about are different ways of understanding the relationship between the exposure, a particular exposure, and an outcome or disease. And so this is the terminology that we're going to use, and so we're interested in the relationship between those two. So when we're talking about epidemiology, what we're looking at is the study of the distribution of exposures and diseases in the population. And so this, this um, map of the world shows that um, you can see here exposures in red. Okay, so these are places where you find a high level of a particular exposure, and then the disease in green. Um, and so you might um, say, this doesn't really work for this particular map, but you know, tobacco use or sales of you know, cigarettes, and then um, cardiovascular disease or something like that. Or, dip, or particular kinds of food, and then particular um, you know, types of cancer or something. And so as an epidemiologist, what you want to do is look at the distribution of um, the exposure and then the relationship between that exposure and the disease. And so there's different ways of doing that, but this is a sort of image that I have in mind of um, sort of on a population level, which is what we're talking about when we're talking about epidemiology, how, what are the patterns of distribution of these different exposures and diseases? And so that's what we're looking at and different ways of studying those. And of course, the ultimate goal of all this is to control health problems. So if you know, um, the more you know about the relationship between particular exposures and disease, so you can have protective exposures and you can have exposures that increase risk of disease, the more, you, uh, the more control you'll have over disease, and then uh, that knowledge in turn can inform clinical decision making. So uh, there are a number of different study designs, and we're going to be talking about those, but what's um, important to understand from the beginning is that there's a hierarchy. It's called an evidence hierarchy um, in evidence-based medicine language. And what this means is that there are different study designs um, listed here uh, in this pyramid, and those study designs provide different levels of evidence. Okay, So um, uh, in this pyramid here, what the designs that are at the bottom of the pyramid provide the least strong evidence, and the strength of evidence increases as you go up the pyramid. So what changes as you go up the pyramid is um, the extent to which you can infer a causal relationship between an exposure and an outcome. So the study designs at the bottom of the pyramid, editorials or expert opinion, so the, the least uh, strong evidence is just someone's opinion, okay? Um, and so based on someone's opinion, that provides very little evidence for a causal relationship between the exposure and the disease. And as you go up the hierarchy from case series, case reports, which are just individual descriptions of cases, um, to case control study, cohort study, these are descriptive, uh, not descriptive, these are um, analytic study designs, which we'll talk about, to randomized control trial and systematic review. So randomized control trial arguably is um, the only um, study design by which you can make a 
causal inference because you know you're controlling the exposure and you can see what happens with the outcome. And then a systematic review is the best form of evidence, and in particular that would be a systematic review of randomized controlled trials. Um, but what that shows is that replicability or the ability to um, replicate a particular effect across a number of different studies is critical in um, providing evidence for a relationship. So you can never really judge uh, causality um, based on one study. But within different types of studies, you know, you have different types of studies that are better or worse for that. Okay, so we're going to go over the different study designs and we'll come back to this and uh, you'll understand at the end why you can infer causality um, better as you, from these study designs as you go up the hierarchy.